Okay, it's uh, loading. And then I'm gonna. Oh, live on YouTube. Look at this on the interwebs. How about that? <laughs> I never, who would have thunk, you know, growing up, okay. getting on the interwebs. Okay. If you write anything You're on your. Good. Oh, goodness. Mm. Um, all right, Michelle, you want to get a kick us off here? Let's get started. So we're live. We've got Jack and we've got June, and this is the third edition of the Chain Reaction around IBC. So basically today, um, I'm going to start looking at questions if you have them. Jack's going to run us through the demo um, that was launched right before the hackathon. Uh, that we had this uh, past weekend. And then June and Jack are going to answer questions and give their thoughts, feedback, and impressions. So um, I will hand it over to you, Jack, to awesome. get started. Michelle, just real quick, uh, when do we get intro music for Chain Reaction? I, I feel like this is, it's, <laughs> it's an opportunity, maybe for the next one. So, um, but also, we need to vote on what that music would be, right? Like rock Oh, music. yeah, of course. You know, I, I think with, with Chain Reaction, there's like a lot of 50s era atomic stuff that I feel like we could make work. Um, anyway, <laughs> yeah, Chain Reaction, anyway, uh, kind of stupid, but. Uh, it looks like we have just one question from um, Mayor. Um, who pays for the, I think he references to the transaction fees. Who pays for the transaction fees for a pairwise connection? Um, that's kind of the first question. And then I think the first user that wants to send a transaction between the pair of chains. Does that make sense in terms of a question? Or do we need more context? Michelle, you're, Michelle, you're breaking up just a tad. Ah. You're breaking up just a tad. Can you repeat that? I'm sorry. Yep. Um, who pays for the transaction fees uh, for a pairwise connection? Uh, so one thing to note here is that this is the entire transaction flow for setting up clients, connections, and channels. As a user, the only transactions you're going to need to worry about are the send and receive packet. Now, folks who are interested in sending data between these two chains will create and maintain those connections and channels. And we anticipate that to be the validators who are associated with those chains. The official role in the IBC protocol is called a relayer. So Whoever is performing this relayer function will pay the transaction fees for the creation and maintenance of the channels. Now, as a user, you will likely pay transaction fees for sending and receiving tokens on chains. Does that make sense? In June, is that right? That is right. And the connections are mostly uh, persistence and it's not need to be like updated every time that the packet has been sent, as you said. So it is relatively cheaper in the whole IBC connection process. That means that uh, a validator or any p person who has a, a economic relationship with the chain can open the connection simply. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. Thank you, Michelle. Um, yeah, I'm just checking if, if we gave him answers that he needed. Then we have our own Chris Goes. Um, oh, so hi, Chris. <laughs> what security assumptions are made? And if one is to use IBC, uh, who do I have to trust? Jim, do you want to take that one? Sure. The security assumptions are based on the validator's behavior and the relayer's behavior. So IBC rely upon the validator's secure state transition. So uh, in the BFD case, if the supermajority of the validator set, say two thirds of the validator sets are malicious, they can modify the state maliciously and submit that. But if that's under two thirds, uh, we can submit the misbehavior proof when they equivocate a specific header. So first IBC is dependent on the less than two thirds of the Byzantine behaviors. And it is dependent on the least one relayers. Uh, the liveness dependent on the least one relayer and the safeness does not dependent on any relayers. So, any malicious behavior cannot submit an invalid message that's protected by the IBC. And if there's any single relayer that is honest, uh, IBC connection or relayer will work fully. Awesome, Chris, hopefully. Um, another quick question is, uh, 
in answer to a transaction fee question, it was mentioned that IBC connection wouldn't need to be updated with every packet sent. What is meant by an update and when would they be made? That's a great question. June, you want to knock that one out? Sure. Uh, right. Do you want me to so repeat packet, it, June? Uh, no, right. I read it. So packet is queued inside the state. So once you push the packet, alike, so it is quite opposite from the what event in Solidity does, it or, or transactions. So transactions or events are stored inside the block, but not persist over the state. So alike then, IBC pushes the packet inside the queue, which is inside the state, which persists over the blocks, unless you manually prune them. So if you pushed three packets on 800, 801, 802, you can relay the header after 102, 100 seconds, uh, any packet after that. And you can prove every packet sent before that at once. So that is what uh, we need to, what when we are saying the update client, when we are saying update client, we are pushing the header into the inner chain. And that can be used to prove every packet sent before then. Yeah, and, and headers are a moment in time. And if we think about concepts like the unbonding period and the, the fact that these validator sets can change over time, it's important to continually update these roots of trust or headers within the opposite, with the, the counterparty chains. Okay, and um, we've got another question from Chris Goes. <laughs> I guess he's testing everyone's knowledge, huh? Keep uh, them coming, Chris, let's, <laughs> let's do this. <laughs> We could do this all night or day. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Who can develop application protocols? And do you need Tinderman's permission? That is a great question. This is the wonderful beauty of open source software. All of this code is public. You're more than willing to go. You're more than uh, able to go look at the ICS specifications of what it what defines an application protocol. Look at the two implementations that actually, I think there's three implementations currently for application protocols essentially the earliest demo that we did. Another is the current implementation of the token transfer protocol that was contributed to us by the IRIS network team. Um, and you can see that in the current demo. And then third, Everett protocol has been working on a cross-chain account protocol um, that you can also see. So there's a number of, beginning to be a number of implementations out there. Um, if you're looking to do so, you don't need any permission from anyone. IBC is a permissionless protocol. We make open source software. We encourage you to go pick it up and give it a try. Anything to add, June? <laughs> nope. Okay, so I don't think we have any more questions, but I think just uh, closing it up, um, maybe we, well, it was Jack's birthday this weekend during the hackathon, uh, but June, you were there. Um, was anyone playing around with the IBC demo? that you saw and did you did you have any things that uh, you noticed or there were any things that you want to call out? Yes, uh, so interestingly, there were uh, quite, say, more than a few uh, projects that worked on, worked with IBC on the Hexon. So uh, unfortunately, I didn't judge them all. So uh, I got enough say for sorry if I don't mention you, but every project worked on the Hexon with IBC was great. Uh, there was a team named, uh, there was a team was working on the multi-dial, which is the utilizing IBC in order to communicate on the substrate chains. So instead of implementing IBC on the Cosmos SDK, what the Tendermint team is currently doing right now, they, uh, impl uh, they were using IBC on substrate to communicate on two chains where both were uh, substrate chains. That was interesting. And the, I think in, in June, just to, just to sort of follow on to that particular example, I think that this highlights the flexibility of the IBC protocol that it can be used on a number of different underlying chains that are not built by us. We have designed this protocol to be generally usable by blockchains all throughout the ecosystem and not just Tinderman and Cosmos based chains. Exactly. Thanks, so the client semantics, for example, does not rely on the Tendermint specific uh, properties and the, yeah, something like that. 
and there was Everett Protocol who uh, implemented. So they have proposed the uh, interchain account spec on the ICS repo, and they implemented that in on the SDK in this hackathon, and they utilized that to uh, send staking derivatives leverage NFT to another chain. That is a that is a handful. <laughs> That's a lot of things. Um, it does actually look like we have another question that I, I don't want to neglect from our own Gautier Maha. Um, he's asking, what are the next steps to getting IBC ready for Game of Zones? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, Gautier Maha, that's a great question. I, I think at this point, we need to uh, spin up some test nets internally, i.e. test. <laughs> test creating test nets. Um, we haven't done the demos that we have that all run on a local machine, essentially. We haven't done a bunch of these where independent parties are running them. Um, I think we're gonna do some refactoring and additions to the code to bring it more in compliance with spec before we begin to do that. Um, but I wish I could give you a more concrete timeline, but I think sometime over the next month, we should start seeing IBC test nets. Okay, and then my, I guess I have one last question is for, based on this demo, right? It's kind of the first way that you can get involved with IBC. There's basically, like, if you are familiar with Cosmos SDK, this is an easy transition for you, right? Is there, is it any heavy lifting or any challenge to do this if you're not familiar with the SDK? I guess kind of like if you're, yeah. Because the chains are independent actors, I don't think you can force updates on any chain. Um, you know, I think IBC will be backwards compatible within the 1.0 line. If we end up adding a bunch more features like relayer incentivization and do a V2 of the IBC protocol, which I think something we'd all like to do. But again, I was talking about the caveats there and, and what we need to see as far as production usage before that would happen. Um, if we do a V2 of the protocol, that would likely not be backwards compatible, but uh, the current plan is to maintain backwards compatibility as well as provide an upgrade versioning and negotiation strategy. And you'll see within the queries and transactions that you're creating, there are version numbers for IBC and currently the one that it's showing is 1.0. Um, so long story short, we have thought about that. We don't really have a concrete answer for it, but we have embedded data within the protocol that will make it easier for us to automate some parts of this potentially. Uh, I want to add that the, it is possible to run multiple versions of IBC in the single chain. So connections can live in multiple connections with multiple version of IBC can live inside a single chain. So even if the backward compatibility broke, then the different IBC module, different version of IBC module on chain A and different version of uh, IBC modules on chain B can communicate with their own respectable compatible versions of others. Wow. Yeah. Really so version, version negotiation and versioning is something we've thought deeply about in the creation of this protocol. And it's extremely important as, as you note uh, for a robust protocol of this type. Okay, so we have another, we have another question. Um, uh, can existing Bitcoin and Ethereum blockchains be integrated to Cosmos? Um, I mean, yeah, so that's a great question. Now, uh, when we're talking about IBC being a layered connection protocol, if you think about TCP IP, the bottom layer is like the machine layer, and then you, you need to have a network layer. In much the same way, the bottom layer of the IBC protocol is the consensus mechanism of the underlying chains. Now, IBC requires instant finality, i.e. once a block has been committed to, it is final, not probabilistic finality like what exists within Bitcoin and Ethereum and other proof of work chains. Um, the way that we are planning to deal with this is to have peg zones that assume the risk, the custodial risk of transferring assets between something where probability, prob uh, Finality is probabilistic, i.e. you need to wait six or sometimes more transactions on the Bitcoin or Ethereum blockchain before they can, can be considered final. And then even then a chain reorg could come in and roll those back. So um, there needs to be an adapter between the proof of work chains and the proof of stake chains. If you wanna see what one of those looks like, we have a project called Peggy, which is getting close to production readiness. 
um, that has some details on how that pegging system works. We're working with a couple of different companies as well to peg Bitcoin. That presents a different set of technical challenges because of a lot of the legacy cryptography and uh, system within Bitcoin itself makes it much more difficult to create these types of pegs. But the folks over at Keep Network, the folks over at Suma One, the cross-chain working group, um, all doing excellent work on this front. And it is something that we plan it to do and we have been putting in significant work towards. Hopefully that answers your question. I hopefully it does too. And um, I think that's all the questions we have. So we've been on here for a while, uh, but also if, if, if you listen to this later, um, the team right now is uh, Tendermint, Interchain Foundation and Agoric. IBC working group, but if you're interested in getting involved, there are regular ecosystem calls that you can listen into, and we'll probably be back uh, maybe soon with an update on the demo with Jack and June. Does that sound good? Awesome. That sounds great. Thank you very much, Michelle and June. Yeah, that was that, a, that was a fun one. Yeah, 40 minutes went by. <laughs> I think that was 50. I think we rocked it. <laughs> good. Thanks, guys. Thank you, everyone. Thank Bye. you very much. And if you guys have questions on IBC, holler at us. Talk okay. soon.